Welcome to episode 45 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men the Animated Series weekly recap podcast. I'm JC, and this is part two of our Nightcrawler episode, uh, which is only a one-part episode in the actual animated series. And actually, yeah, and a, and a pretty relatively short episode, <laughs> even just plot-wise. Yeah, but <laughs> stuff has been going so awesome with Joe from the Joe and Joe podcast that we decided we're going to extend this into two full episodes, and let's get it going now. <laughs> We also get what seemingly should be a throwaway line of, oh, yeah, this place is crazy. There are doors that lead to nowhere, right. yeah. which is also like a reference for me because I've been listening to this podcast called Red Web, and they talk about the Winchester house, oh, which if yeah. you know about the Winchester house, this was the Winchester family, the lone survivor from the family after a bunch of people died, and they just made this mansion weird, and there are doors that just go into other walls. Like, Do you know why they did it? I don't. They did it. The woman, she was the heir to the Winchester rifle, yeah, is a fortune, and the reason they built the house so such a maze, you can still go to it this day because she because she cause, had a house and kept adding right. to it. And the idea was that the ghosts of all the people that were murdered by Winchester rifles would be trapped. The malevolent spirits of people that either murdered or were murdered by Winchester rifles would be trapped and get lost in the house mm. because they were like, because the guilt of all the dead people from the Winchester family, that, that's why they built that house. So Byzantine because they wanted to con confuse the spirits and all that stuff. I always find it fascinating how rich people logic their way through things. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> they did a movie on it. That was decent. There was actually a really great comic book about it. I think it, it might've been called Winchester or something, but, but there, there've been a few adaptations, no. but that's kind of rough. I'm Got getting it. some of the details wrong. Yeah. The reason why it's so crazy is the, the, the specifically the heiress wanted to like trick and confuse the spirits of the dead from the Winchester family. So can we assume that in this place, it's because they couldn't save a lot of those ski accident victims <laughs> and it's yeah. just to let them go off yes. on their own and get lost. Yes. They also mentioned that they're there and they're and like, you could board up a door. Yeah, I get it. If the uh, part, if a wing of the building got knocked off from shelling during World War II, that's cool. You can put a board up. Yeah. <laughs> And that's why Reinhardt's so angry. He's like, I've been telling them yeah. to cover the board yeah. or go up yeah. the hill and tell the yeah. speed resort to have safety lessons. But for want of a nail, my, <laughs> my monk was lost. At that point, we actually get Wolverine, who he gives his first mention about losing faith. Yeah, they did me in metal. And, yeah, that's you know, right. Like, I guess to expand on that a little bit, you explore a little bit more later when he actually, actually interacts with Nightcrawler. But it makes sense to have Wolverine in this against Nightcrawler because of all the X-Men, there's plenty of other people that had trauma, but Wolverine's lived like the longest that we know of. Totally. Yes. And so, so having seen so much like... Yeah. yeah. Even if you take yeah, like, even if you take out the recent Dark Phoenix stuff and morph mm -hmm. and just take all that out, he's just abused and traumatized. This point, he's Lab 95 man. years old canonically. But he's like, so I heard you got a demon problem. And <laughs> that's his... <laughs> I'm Wonderful here, to, I'm here to murder a demon. Yeah, which causes one of the monks to drop a bunch of plates. Yeah. And Wolverine's just totally oblivious to the fact that it's like, hmm, why would that make them <laughs> a, 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 a ghost? That's a Scooby-Doo logic. Yeah. We jump over to Gambit's room. Gambit is lying in a bed recovering. A uh, monk Re comes in and he has... Recover you say recovering. I say brain swelling. Oh, yeah. He did look like he was in a coma. He was in a coma. He wakes up pretty easily after oh, this incident. Where a monk comes in and has some... Like chloroform or something? Or Why? This is genuine what I don't understand about this episode. Why? Why? Uh, Reinhardt's why is, a dick. Why is that monk trying to kill? But he, these are, to to their knowledge. They don't know that they're special. They don't know that they're special yet. Yeah. They're just literally people who got, yeah, she's a sexy girl, but she puts the robe on right away. <laughs> why, are, why is Reinhardt trying to kill Gambit? For some reason, Reinhardt identifies that they must serve the demon. And maybe, I don't know, here's the thing. It may have been at one point they're examining unconscious Gambit and you see the eyes. And I would say, Interesting. if you're worried about something serving a demon, not white eyes might be the reason. Very true, and maybe that got cut. Well, they, but they did, like, right before that, ask about the demon, so. They, yeah, they asked so. about him, but, like, the Wolverine asked about him, like, I'm gonna, gonna kill him. Yeah, you know, he like, didn't yeah. seem he was, in favor yeah. of the demon. Yeah, he was, think, like, ready to be a Ghostbuster. I, I, I chalked that up to Reinhardt just being, like, kind of an erratic character and just, just being I, like, oh, they mentioned something about this. How would they know? I chalked it up yeah. to needing to move the plot along. We have, I also still stick yeah. by the headcanon. He just wanted the doors boarded up. and <laughs> <laughs> Should have just boarded up another, that room. <laughs> another group of people who won't help me board up the doors. <laughs> so, just help me with the doors. And all the sexual tension. Of, like, oh. like, like Rogue is there and he's like, ah. Oh. Uh, 
I've got, I've, <laughs> I could nail the hammer with my own pecker. <laughs> I'm ready. Put the boards up. Longest episode in the history of the show. <laughs> so Rogue actually walks in just in time, saves the day. I got real Temple of Doom vibes. Yeah. Real, I loved it. I loved oh, it. Yeah. Real Temple of Doom vibes. And they start running through, and then she decides to go into the abandoned area, yep. kicks her way through a door. <laughs> First, and, rips the robe off. Yep. Of course, she had to rip the robe yeah. off. Too much fighting in this robe. <laughs> also, there was one point where the animation did have a flub, where she was wearing the robe, not wearing the robe, and then wearing oh, yeah. the robe again, <laughs> which is our favorite thing from the animation studio out of Korea. They also make a point of, and it's not like it's a huge mystery who the bad guy is, but they make a point of hiding his face, and then as he's fleeing the room, they clearly show his face. Yeah. You clearly see that it's that other weirdo, because he's got the goatee, yeah. again, the facial yeah, hair thing. Facial. But it's like you couldn't hide it for one more scene. Nope. Yeah. Just put a shadow on his face. <laughs> as Rogue goes through the door, she starts to fall because it's an unexpected mm -hmm. one. She's not in full flight mode. Nightcrawler, who happens to be behind, jumps out, grabs her, teleports. And we're supposed to think that Nightcrawler was the guy in the room yeah. because they were hiding the face in the room, except for the animated part where they yeah. clearly show that it's not Nightcrawler. <laughs> and the guy didn't have the weird hands. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So my question about that is, I do understand that like when Nightcrawler teleports, he technically grows through like a hell, right? Or, like, yeah, li li limbo, 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 or limbo, limbo, specifically <laughs> and limbo. And that's actually where the, the puff of smoke comes from. Yeah. The brimstone. Like the, yeah. It's the atmosphere of the realm that he's teleporting. Yeah, it's, like the, it's like what humans have interpreted as hell or something in this universe. No. No, it's, it's limbo. limbo. So there's okay. mortal plane, yeah. limbo, hell. Okay. Yeah. But my whole thing was like, how fucking terrifying was that for Rogue? Like, yeah. They, the teleporting. Well, they, they've, like, done, well like, they, they've done stories about that. So if anyone, for him, it's instantaneous. For anyone, instantaneous. But they've, they've, read, they've done stories where he get you get trapped in it. It actually is prolonged, and so then it is, and it is hell. So she doesn't see like a. No, no one okay. sees it. Yeah, no one I, sees I'm it. I'm just imagining her like falling out of the door, and all of a sudden, she's like ah! they've explored that. They've explored that where <laughs> he gets caught in a teleport, and so yeah. he's in the realm where he normally okay. just slides through. I'm just imagining, and then, and then, and then there were the baby, creatures, and yeah. there were the baby bamps, the baby yeah. bamps, the bamps. Yep. I'm just imagining I, I, because in my head at the time, I was like, it was like it'd be so ironic for her to like be falling out of a church door and then be in hell for like half a second, and then that land would be hilarious. Church that, door. No, that would absolutely. I'll tell you what. I'll bet you if he teleports with someone like Quicksilver or North Star. Oh, no. I'll bet you they would be able to see it. Quicksilver, they, Quicksilver worse than North yeah, Star, yeah. Because they would be moving so fast, they would absolutely be... <laughs> that's real fun. You know what? Yeah. Any of you X-Men writers out there, that's what I want to see that. Oh, yeah. This, that's I want to see one that. thing we should take from the Fox X-Men movies is those Quicksilver Yeah, things. I want to see that. I want to see yeah. him teleport a speedster. The speedster notice something amiss in that realm and have to convince them they need to figure out how to get to his version of Limbo. Because Limbo's always a little different in Marvel. Quicksilver sees Madison. He sees something, yeah. <laughs> Really? You're going to go for Madison? Mad oh, Madison? Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. But yeah, I would, that would be cool. With but, a Y, and it's yeah, not yeah. where you think. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, we, were at, the magic, brains we out. were at the Magic Castle about two months before we saw that episode. And I swear to God, we saw not the actual actors. Yeah. But th th they got it so perfect. That there was 100% yeah. that girl, 100% having to be a part of the show. And garbage, just a garbage person. I Perfect. Was on the podcast, but I've definitely talked amongst friends. Were like they nailed those girls at Magic the hang, Castle. They hang with those magicians of the Magic Castle. We did not talk about that on the podcast, but you were spot percent. the fuck on. It's not even her by herself. It's like her and Wong. Oh, like I love that dynamic. I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. I heard that they're making. They're just gonna have her be his girlfriend. It's like oh, when Wong great. shows up in movies, she'll just be. They'll just have so, her hanging out in the couch. On, and be like, bye, Wongy on, baby. On She Hulk Assemble, make making of mm -hmm. episode, Benedict Wong goes. He, I love his headspace in this because he was like, oh yeah. So I just realized that Wong has adopted a puppy, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Anyway, so Nightcrawler saves Rogue. Nightcrawler <laughs> saves Rogue. Still on the first yeah. page. Nightcrawler, Rogue, <laughs> uh, saving. Brother, sister, saving. And they don't even know it. It's true. I know. No, I'm, like looking, at, I'm actually looking at Rod. Do you even understand what that means? Wait. They're technically, the technical, oh, yes. I guess they'd be yeah. stepping. Oh, yeah, yeah. Step, Just make it step, sure. Just make it step, sure. Step yeah, I didn't put that together. Yeah. yeah. Step brother, I guess would be. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. I want, okay, now we got to remake Step Brothers with Rogue and Nightcrawler. <laughs> <Can we just laughs> become Mystique friends? and Destiny come at late in life, and one's got Rogue and one's got Nightcrawler. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Rogue, Rogue and Nightcrawler building a bunk bed. I'm, uh -huh. I should yeah. <laughs> Did you put your tail on my drum kit? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's like the wholesome version. Of yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, his no, tail. No, I didn't put my tail on your drum kit. <laughs> also, his tail, not really shown in the episode. That's true. Kind of ignore the fact that he has a tail in this. It's animated, right? Or no? Is it not animated? I, like, 
think I thought he, I saw it. maybe very briefly in like him outside yeah. running across the wall, but like for the most part, that like because probably I, a standards and practice thing. Cause pro- <laughs> and I mean it because it probably look pretty phallic. I was thinking more of the way like the monkey uses it to like swing between shit, but yeah. I think when he's doing like the circus stuff, it actually got removed under yeah. the circus leotard and stuff. Yeah. At that point, Wolverine <laughs> pops out, sees that Nightcrawler is holding Rogue and yeah. like they're squaring off and Wolverine goes for it. He uh, does, stab first, ask questions later. Nightcrawler is refusing to fight. He's just mostly dodging out of the way. And then there's one point where Wolverine literally would have hit a kill shot yeah. had Nightcrawler not teleported. Nightcrawler mm. waited until the last moment <laughs> to teleport because the robe doesn't teleport with him. Yeah. Which meant that Wolverine was already piercing the robe. Yeah. And that's how quick Nightcrawler was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Which. Leads me to my next point. Wolverine's the most racist X-Men of all because he's clearly judging a book by its cover. He yeah. is clearly going against everything that Xavier has tried to teach the X-Men. He of don't judge a book by a cover. He Wolverine's really like, doesn't listen to Chuck a lot. Wolverine's though. like, look out, blue yeah. dude with fuzzy big ears and a tail, or maybe not a tail. I'm going to get him. Wolverine and, is racist. And the only reason it wasn't Cyclops is because he wasn't there. He would have, <laughs> no, he would have just yelled at yeah, Nightcrawler. Yeah. yeah. So Nightcrawler tries to calm down the situation he extends a hand it's a great reveal though because once he gets out of that then you see him in that resplendent dave cockrum red suit Mm -hmm. which is just such a i I love that outfit and i do some they've updated it in recent years i like when they keep the essence of it yeah it still looks good but like when they get away from it when they get away from the wings and the Mm -hmm. red and Mm -hmm. that doesn't work for me for nightcrawler yeah but i'll take an updated version yeah but that night that just it's just so good with the white gloves and wolverine acts like he's gonna shake his hand and then just literally cheap shots nightcrawler (laughs) he really does he does 100% 100% cheap shots, but then Brother Michael... Reminiscent of the, R- William the Refrigerator Perry bull- pulling Big John Studd out of the ring in WrestleMania 2. Thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody has been watching WWE I on Peacock. I absolutely have. I absolutely yep. have. But Brother Michael comes in and says, no, you can't do it. No. He's my brother. And it's like, that, I think that was a, a cut to commercial. Yeah, because th- that was like a soap opera moment. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what? Uh, it's funny. Uh, you sounded uh, taller on the radio. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And then they're like, wait, brother? And they're like, yeah, like in the monastery sense. Yeah. Oh, what did you say? Ecclesiastical. ecclesiastical sense. Yeah, ecclesiastical yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before we were going over notes, we are like, biblical sense? Nope, that means something Yeah, different. exactly. <laughs> but, so, let me just, uh, it's a little bit jumping ahead here, but my question then is, if Nightcrawler is just hanging out at that monastery, why is this guy after him? You know what I mean? I think that's... Like, the, I don't understand it. I think that's the spite. I got the feeling that Reinhardt just assumed that he's, like, the devil or something, or yeah. a demon. Yeah. And everyone else is accepting. Okay, so it's just been like a long simmering. But, but he's he like I, Nightcrawler is a monk himself. I think a part of it comes from the appearance of the the town getting more and more freaked out as yeah. established at the start of the episode. Mm-hmm. Then the strangers showing up, and then like I said, maybe and, some, the, and the blood moon. And the blood moon on top. You're of right. It. Let's not forget the blood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe it's just the combination that it's too far, it's too and much. I don't believe okay. it anymore. Okay. It's a theory. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that works. Yeah. So everybody calms down at that point. They actually start talking about Nightcrawler's teleportation, and he gives the simplest a- explanation. He's like, "Yeah, I just think of a place, look to it in my mind, and then I'm there." It works. <laughs> no. Did you know that he has what's called line of sight teleportation? So he has to see it. He doesn't have to, but there is a danger. The if he risk does is not. he will die. He has to, he has to at least like be able to visualize it to an extent. Go for it. No, job. it's not at all. He can go wherever he wants to, but he has no idea what's behind that wall. Yeah. So he runs the risk of teleporting his into mass table. into table, into couch, into whatever. The, so it's not like in my head I see the White House and I can go there. No, it's he, he has yeah. to be looking through a window and then he can go. Yeah. In there. And they've made a big point in comics of if he ever is teleporting to something that he can't see it. They know it's if you do this wrong, yeah. you're dead. Yeah, it was a and, big deal. Early yeah. on, it was a real big yeah. deal. Even now with the Krakoan era and resurrection being a thing, which we've talked about on the show, mm-hmm. it's a little easier because if he fucks up, then Xavier could just bring him back. But right. it's going to be a really painful, horrible death. Yeah, that's the argument for real world time travel, right? Is even if we figure it out, we have to figure out space. Yeah. Because yeah. he'll just end up in somewhere in outer space. Yeah. 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 And also, he also early on, he always had, he had a limitation of, I believe it was a mile. Yeah, that, that was, has that gone away. First, yeah, that, so, that's the thing. Like, I love when they give these limitations, but uh, over the years, they, those just get wiped away. But there was an issue where they were fighting, I think, Moses Magnum, and he had to get from this island that was blowing up to, like, their boat or something mm-hmm. like that. And they were all like, okay, it's like a mile. They could see it on the horizon. Yeah. And they're like, you got to do it. And it was just, but it took everything out of them. Yeah. yeah. Or he'll rapid fire, where he'll, yeah. he'll do, like, football field jumps, but he'll just, yeah. like, jump, jump. And when he gets there, then he's totally yep. spent. 
so if you're just now if you're just like listening to this episode not the other ones the ongoing thing is i only really know stuff from toys video games and show <laughs> so my canon of nightcrawler's teleportation is from was you video. throwing the action figure across the room yes <laughs> that video game nightcrawler is great so that one i think the in-game explanation in like the booklet or something was that he can only go through like the what he's aware of in like the kind of line of sight but like the other room or something that's yeah. when he could only pass through like the one door yeah. or, like two doors or something like pretty that. much yeah because yeah because yeah, there'd be yeah. a window on the door and he also kill everybody in between totally yeah <laughs> no that that game was great though man i love playing that crawler you would just pop yeah. all over the screen and yeah gambit was great in that game it was, it was a really that game, game was really dope especially that, when you had the cheat code at the beginning oh yeah. that's a must yeah you didn't use that no i had the x-men top-down pc game pc was, game oh the Nintendo game was really bad, but there was a PC one, and they and it was based on the Fall of the Mutants storyline. Mm. So vaguely remember you that. were running around the Dallas Mall, and you would fight all these demons. It was straight up the Fall of the Mutants storyline, wow. and it was Havoc and Polaris and Rogue and Nightcrawler. Yeah, it was awesome. So they continue on with their conversation, and Nightcrawler tries to relate to him. He's like, "I'm a mutant, like you guys are, trying to like distance himself from the perception of being a demon." This is where I interject one more time. <laughs> the show's not long enough. Technically, because he is the son of a mutant, he's technically not a mutant. He would just be the son of a mutant. Isn't oh. that the way mutation works? You mean you're different from your parents? I think scientifically, it's how it works. But I think in the MC- now it's the X gene, so I get it. So yeah. In the uh, yeah, I get it. He has the Although, X gene, but, and that's. The but end. I would actually say he is different than his parents. Not if you, yes and no, not if you take the terrible origin story that they gave him by Chuck Austin, which I don't like. I'm not sitting saying it should stay canon. I feel free to wipe it out. <laughs> but you remember the red demon uh, from Azazel. Azazel. Yeah. That's Nightcrawler's dad. Yeah, of course. And he's the, he's what became the Christian devil, right? No, he's just really? a, he's just a demon. Who, he's a demon of limbo. He's yeah, not a demon of hell. Masqueraded as a rich dude and mystique. There's somewhere that I specifically read, because after that first class came out, I read up about him. And one of the comic book bios said that Christianity based their conception of Satan on Azazel in this Marvel universe. Maybe. The, the problem is, conceived at the time. Yeah, the honestly. problem with the multiple theologies is there are like eight different equivalents of the devil within right. Marvel comics. Right. He, he is and, specific to limbo though. And in one of the versions, Nightcrawler grows up to be Belasco. Yes. In the magic and storm. So Nightcrawler grows up to be a red devil mm-hmm. himself. But if you look at it that way though, he's got his dad's teleporting powers and his mom's blueness. Therefore, everybody's favorite mutant power blue. Right. But so that yeah. he's technically not a mutant if you yeah. look at it that way. But yes, if you use the X gene as the barometer. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's if you use it from the perspective of mutant as in offshoot from homo sapien. Yes. If you use the yes. if you use it as a homo superior equals mutant, then yeah. that is the case. But also then when they did the fact that his dad was technically a demon and actually Nightcrawler is actually part demon. It's like a terrible when they terribly introduced North Star and Aurora. Uh, fairy people <laughs> i don't remember that yeah, i'm very happy i don't terrible and it was like you got just just leave their mutants just let them be mutants yeah like they don't have to have fairy rod people. north star and aurora what team alpha flight there you yeah. go yeah <laughs> um, the twins the power twins yeah. yep but yeah so i always i personally i always ignore that whole thing but what do, do you hear something you you may not know rod you i'm sure you know this you know chris claremont's original plans for nightcrawler's lineage i do not know that no mystique was supposed to be his father his mother was supposed to be Destiny. Oh. Because oh, Mystique's some, a shapeshifter. Some screenwriter's going to use that oh, yeah. storyline in the future. That's, That's what, really fascinating. It was. And Marvel was very early 80s, very that skittish. Was, that was also very comics code era, too. Yeah, yeah. They were like, we can't go that far. Yeah. So they referenced that Mystique was his parent. But they technically never said that she was his mother. When they meet with Mystique, is with the Brotherhood and the whole Senator mm-hmm. Kelly stuff. Nightcrawler and her, they're both looking at their blueness, and she says something like, uh, something along the lines of, why don't you ask your mother, Margalis Vardos? She knew who his mom yeah. was, the woman who raised him. And he was like, don't, 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 what, what? And then they never addressed it because Claremont wanted to do that. He wanted to have him be born from destiny, fathered by Mystique, get shapeshifted as a man, and they never let him do One it. One of the things I love about still being into all this, growing older and stuff, is mm-hmm. seeing how all the original creators like still embedded their intentions, their progressive intentions, oh, yeah. to things even when like the powers of be were like teleporting demon creatures and laser beams and stuff. That's cool. That is unbelievable. To have a scientist or a, yeah, yeah. something like there's something that's totally innocuous. Yeah, a shape shifting being. We're limiting it to hilarious. So we actually do get to to see 
for purposes of this show, not in accordance to the comics. But we see a woman birthing. We don't see it. We know. <laughs> we, know we see that the moments after. We, we, we see. <laughs> There's 40 seconds of afterbirth, and it's yeah. beautiful. It's, it's a blue lovely. It's just a, the, one of the most lovely piece of animation I've ever seen. But we do see that there is, what's it called? The woman who sits there when uh, they're birthing? Midwife. midwife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a midwife who definitely yeah. saw that birthing. So. Yeah. <laughs> That poor woman. But when Nightcrawler is born, he comes out blue, and we see that the townsfolk are really not cool with somebody and, having a blue baby. And as he points out, unlike most mutants, his mutation was evident at birth. Yep. Which leads to the thing that he's not technically a mutant. Yeah. But yeah, yes, yeah, so he was blue and furry from birth. She doesn't want to deal with it, so she does the little Moses baby in the basket scenario. Mm-hmm. I mentioned that too. I was like, it's like, is the mercy drowning your child? <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll be raised by penguins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There are definitely not penguins near this area of Europe. I don't know. There's a shape-shifting lady that had a blue baby. So. I'm going to play Westchester <laughs> like the house of hell. Oh, lucky for Kurt. He ends up getting picked up by a traveling circus. <laughs> lucky. The Wagners. <laughs> yeah. Wagners, the Wagners. Oh, uh, I'm and Kurt then, Wagner of the Munich Circus. And then you see a little uh, highlight reel of him in his suit for the first time. I love it. And he's jumping around, and it literally looks like a danger room that's not trying to murder him. Yeah, yeah I yes. love it. That's what's so great. Like he was happy there in the circus. He was accepted, but as soon as he went to try to go to normal society, he was hunted and hounded. The crowd started de- like depleting. They do like a pan out shot, and you actually see the crowd. And there's six people watching yeah. the circus, and you can't survive off of yeah the pence that those people are bringing yeah there, there was also weird stuff in the comics too he, so nightcrawler always had a weird lineage thing he was dating technically his sister good Wait, yeah who's his sister? amanda sefton I don't even so know she's the daughter of Margali Svardo. So they all have a weird, all have, no, no names are the same. So everyone's apparently a lot of baby daddies dropping babies with different names. He was raised by Margali Svardo and in the circus and all that stuff. But yeah. like his, it, it completely his stepsister. So there's no, I mean, she was. That makes it not, Yeah. I, but, I, I'm never good with those excuses. But when they first, it's I've weird though. I've seen this on a certain <laughs> yeah, website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, stepmom. Yeah. When they introduce him, they look, they go on like double dates. And he was like, this is Amanda who like I was raised with. And it's always weird. That's a phrase. It's okay. weird. It is. It is really weird. She turned out to be a demon uh, sorceress, and she's so. so you know, Wait, it's, the, it's person, comics. the person who was dating their stepbrother turned out to be a demon sorceress. Yeah, it's comics. It's like so, the Peter Parker syndrome. Everyone turns into a. Super I bring villain. this up with like little commentary, but just an observation mm-hmm. because. Uh, so if, if, I don't know if listeners don't know I'm Asian American. I was raised in Indiana, but my family's Korean. I had not realized until recent years how much European or specifically like Caucasian history and lore has incest oh most completely. of the crown <laughs> yeah and so, game of thrones is just like a home video <laughs> and so whenever i hear something it's like, oh yeah kurt wagner and his yeah. sister margo something they're are they're boning or whatever I'm like why is this a thing it's <laughs> you know, yeah no, it, it is you know weird. what didn't it's, happen in the samurai story <laughs> it's weird man it's weird or, spoiler you know what doesn't happen in wakanda forever i'm happy that is a spoiler <laughs> that you decided to share yeah is that there are family members that are tempting sure, each other? Sure, is so sad because her piece got killed. Like what? It's no, just, it, it doesn't. Just, it's just wild. It's a new it's, thing for me to see so much. You're like, not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not uh, wrong. But yeah, so Kurt actually has had a weird convoluted yeah. family history in that regard. And then you couple so, in, then you couple yeah. in the fact technically Rogue's his sister. So he has three fingers. Stop oh, it! Oh, no, oh, no, it's oh. not. It's because of the demon. In Germany, shit. in Germany, they call the shocker the nightcrawler. Look on our clip. Just make three weeks worth of clips from this episode, <laughs> all out of context. Can't wait to get Unglaublich. Unglaublich. Gambit being the thoughtful individual that he is when he hears that basically Nightcrawler had to join a monastery because hey. of how shitty the world treated him. Yeah. A, three, goes, a three finger demon <laughs> coming after my lady. <laughs> Gambit going to get riled up. I'm going to push through. Gambit says, no peace for the wicked looking. (laughs) Jesus Christ. And Nightcrawler attributes the fact that there is so much hate to him because of his demonic appearance, he reminds people of their capacity for sin. I actually understand that because I'm not saying all churches are like this. I grew up in a church when I was younger. And I remember not the one I grew up in, but another one I was like adjacent to or helping and stuff. There was a lady that kind of took me and another friend in when we were helping like out of state with a church thing. And she was of faith, but didn't really attend church a whole lot because she was divorced and she kind of got shunned from her own church because she was divorced and wanted to start like a divorce support group. And their reasoning of not wanting to start is they didn't want to remind people that it happens. Oh. 
That sounds pretty accurate. It's, it sounds on point for church, yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, and so like this thing with Nightcrawler being like, I just give them the bad vibes and they don't like that. Like, like that's that on point, yeah. I don't mean this to get too <laughs> real world heavy, but when terrible like floodings and stuff happen, what's the first thing you hear out of the mouths of the church in the real world? They're like, oh, it's because of all the sin in that town. So it's all the same sex sin going here and all the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, maybe it's global warming, jerk. I got nothing to do with it. Nightcrawler does say that he's able to find peace by dedicating his life to God. And that's where... Wolverine gets pretty aggro with him. He's like, God gave up on us a long time ago. He was just talking about Canadians, though. <laughs> uh, Nightcrawler tries to to do the devout response of trying to ease him back. And Wolverine's, every answer you're giving is garbage. Like, he just calls bullshit on all it of it. It does seem oversimplified. Who's, but who's seen more horrible things in this world than Wolverine? Yeah, yeah, he's up there. It's Wolverine and Magneto. Yeah. 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 At that time, Reinhardt goes to town and that's where he's just, hey guys, the beast <laughs> that you want, I know where he's at. He's up in the monastery. He's defiled the church. Yeah, he's defiled yeah. it, yeah. essentially. Because the townspeople are actually like, that's a holy place. I mean, we can't burn that down. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, fuck it, it's defiled. <laughs> yeah. We come back to the monastery. Nightcrawler ends up finding Logan in the chapel. And then we get more of that further explanation from Wolverine. If there's a god, what kind of god would let something like this happen to me? And he shows the claws pop. And Unfortunately for Nightcrawler, his response is very similar to what he's already been saying. Of, you just need to have a more open heart. Wolverine's like, I'll open your heart up. He's what? Like, All of this is yeah. open heart. Pick is a not the, Yeah, <laughs> I'll open it. Open heart, not the issue here. But at the time, they see the crowds coming, and Wolverine again just loves to point blank call out stuff to Nightcrawler. He's like, "What's the purpose in that right down there?" Mm-hmm. It's great. It's yeah. great. And uh, as someone who is a long time loved Wolverine and Nightcrawler's friendship and relationship because they're tough on each other. That scene was awesome. That was great. Even though like they just met, they're still that yeah. they're building that friendship. I thought it was a wonderful. It's a good dichotomy too because Wolverine definitely has the longer history of it. And the Nightcrawler has like a closer proximity mm-hmm. of yeah. like kind of the horrors of the world. Wolverine <laughs> only really pops out like as being a mutant when he literally does the claw pop. Like most people are gonna look at him and just think he's like a biker dude. They're not going to assume that person is a mutant. I guess that's a good point. So his history, besides the times he chooses to like pop his claws out and stuff, is actually seeing real world humanity horrors, like the wars and genocides and stuff. And then Nightcrawler is the most Pretty much just seeing like mutant. Yeah, and Nightcrawler that he goes through all that and still has that positive outlook. That's what's always, for me, that's what's always really been appealing about the character. Yeah, I feel like the characters like that, not to discredit him, because it definitely takes Mm -hmm. a lot of faith and willpower and stuff, but also it's either that or become a serial killer. (laughs) Well, it's funny you mentioned that. You have three options. You have basically do what the Morlocks do, which is hide, and they're hiding with negativity. You have him who's hiding with positivity, and then of course, like you become a member of the Brotherhood. When he first meets Kitty Pride in the comic books, they address stuff like this, and yeah. she is frightened of him. Because at the time, she is in the Jubilee role and only about 13 years old. Yeah, yeah. very young, had never seen yeah, anything they, like this. They, they touch on that in that Pride. Of the, yeah, they do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not to that No, no, but no, they thing. do, yeah. they do. And he just att- approaches her with such grace and kindness and mm-hmm. warmth that... He just it's just endearing and wins her over and it's just so charming it's just so charming i'm not trying to equate like a lesser experience to this but this is personal parallel so in college i moved into my dorm like a little bit early i worked it out at school and everything but no one told the maintenance staff so all my shit was moved into my dorm still boxed up and stuff and it because i don't live with my parents anymore everything i owned was in that dorm mm-hmm. so the maintenance staff threw everything away oh the dumpster now the school did make it up to me they figured out all the costs and stuff right and oh. but when, when that first happened I saw my shit in the dumpster. I realized what happened. And I walked into the admissions office and told them what happened. And the guidance or one of the counselors or whatever was like, oh, my God. And she was like trying to figure out how to fix it. And she was like, I'm just happy that you're like pretty calm and you're like laughing about it. I was like, it's either that or I'm going to murder someone. So let's take yeah. this right now. And then we'll yeah. work it out. Yeah. So you hit those tipping points. And you're like, I'm either going to be super positive about this or you're going to die. So let's choose. What to- <laughs> you're not wrong. You literally just disca- described the difference between Daredevil and the Punisher. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. One, no. one bad day. So at the time, Nightcrawler's reaction is that he needs to gather his things and get out of there so nobody else gets hurt. And Wolverine's like, what's the matter? Are you losing your faith? To yeah. an extent, Wolverine's getting antagonistic with him because mm-hmm. he's like, I don't believe your bullshit. Yeah, he's like, let's see how this pans yeah. out. And he actually, he's like, did you lose faith? And you have this like moment by himself where Nightcrawler, Wolverine's like ready to go and rally the troops and defend the monastery. Nightcrawler says to himself, why must they always hate me? And then he doesn't see the Bible that's on the table or the 
pedestal or mm. I forget. Lectern. Lectern, oh, there yeah. we go. In the wind blows and it's, I wonder what was on that what page. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it, it was flipped, like, it get flipped. the fuck out of the church. <laughs> That's a very weird passage <laughs> to be in your Bible. Yeah, yeah, flip, flip to the parable it says, uh, Christ your son in my name. <laughs> I was just going to say, it wouldn't have been the weirdest verse. Yeah. <laughs> Kill uh, your children to prove you love me. When oh, th- you can a- get married eighteen times and you're okay, but all your wives are whores. <laughs> there was a. An- I really hope the neighbors heard that. <laughs> there was an illusion, though. I think it was one of the monks had said that Neuherzl, the little town and stuff, is isolated, so they're not even aware the music exists. Oh, this is like no. Their- it's yeah, like they the actually person. think it's a demon. They don't have, nobody had the internet at this point, but they yeah. really didn't have the internet. Uh, maybe it was just all, the, maybe all like all the modern ski fashions that people would show up in. Maybe that's what was scaring them this whole time. <laughs> that's why they're like, you're in neon. Oh my God. What? Here, here's the thing. <laughs> Dr. Strange and Clea actually just left and were performing <laughs> right. like rituals <laughs> and nobody's doing, acknowledging that. Strange and Clea are doing like a Penn and Teller act across the Alps. That is interesting. Yeah. What? Yeah. There was literal people fooling with dark magic and possibly Satan. Yeah. Like down the slope or yeah. up the slope. Yeah. Sidorak, not Satan. <laughs> we don't know. Hey, we're like, he, he messes with a bunch of stuff. Sidorak's not a nice dude either. No, he's not. Rogue also, to that point about the people don't even know mutants, Rogue tries to calm Wolverine. Please, maybe don't kill him. They're just scared. And yeah. it's, yeah, all racists are scared. It's yeah. called phobia. Yeah, yeah, it's a phobia for them. <laughs> Wolverine's like, Rogue, they still think you won the Civil War. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honey, it was just a war of an aggression. <laughs> So the villagers get there. They start shooting at the windows. Gambit pulls Nightcrawler aside so he doesn't get shot. They start ramming the door and they get inside and then they decide to fight Wolverine. And these are like yeah. not trained soldiers trying no. to fight Wolverine. No. And I'm just like, it's not going to end well. Oh, he's holding back so hard right yeah. now. It's it's like, like, well. They're like in the like bonnets. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it's got to be the. They're all, I mean, they're dressed it, like, like a universal yeah, horror movie. Yeah. 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 It's got to be the hardest fight for Wolverine because he's not good at holding back. No. And if it's a soldier, it's okay. It might kill him because it's a soldier. But he's like, I really can't kill these people. Yeah. You do get Rogue. She has a group of them that are fighting her. And she grabs what is definitely a Garden of Eden tapestry and wraps them yeah. in it. Did I see that right? And she was like hiding by posing in it like Looney Tunes style. Or was that just an animation thing? Because she was completely still up against the tapestry. And then, oh, then the group, interesting. I, I couldn't decide if that was like an animation thing where like they, they just didn't animate her until they needed her to move. We I think that, that was an animation. Tapestries, thing. but if you are <laughs> Scottish count, I am Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Two of the other villagers come up from behind, try to grab her, and of course, at this point, you have her revealed arms, which they touch. <gasps> Scandalous! But the monks, the monks knew talking what they were about doing. you yeah. and me. They, yeah, like, see, turns out the monk was right up. the whole time. Uh, and that's why you don't have sex before marriage, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But what we have seen from Rogue before is parts of people's personalities get sucked in turn, not just the powers. Rogue, in that moment, Rogue just goes all MAGA. She's like, everybody. (laughs) Oh my God, racism. Uh, The the anti-white agenda. Oh my God. Yeah. I was waiting for her to scream, won't somebody please think of the children. (laughs) Think of the children. Stop the vote. Microchips. Oh, microchips. <laughs> Steve Jobs and the Jewish lasers. Oh, my God. In the chaos, Reinhardt gets a hold of a gun. I just have to push through. Yeah. We have three more episodes to record tonight. <laughs> It's going to be great on our timeline. There's going to be one episode that's three and a half see, hours. You guys, see, my, you guys thought that you, your timing, because they pushed back the release of X, of the new X-Men show, yeah. you guys thought that your timing was going to be off. But when we're done editing all my episodes, yeah. welcome to it'll Night- take you through half of 2020. I was say, welcome to Nightcrawler Month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reinhardt goes and he tries to take out two of the monks that are in the library. Yep. And Nightcrawler intercepts that. But to the point that we were talking about earlier, he teleports from another room. So he is doing a blind jump there. Mm, which, bold. which I think is them just not paying it yet. I think a part of it is also like Eric Leewald has acknowledged he doesn't understand the nuance of the powers of certain characters. Yeah. And they had members of the staff who were the X-Men experts, Uh but because it doesn't have to be 100% comic accurate, they were willing to do liberties like that. He could do it. It's just he's taking the risk of it. See, that was my kind of, this makes sense to me because this was my argument from the beginning of the episode where it's, you're running a risk or it takes a lot out of you, but when you're running away from an angry mob, like that's a good time to take it. The other cool thing about his teleporting, just a tidbit fact, it doesn't stop momentum. 
Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you're falling from an airplane and you teleport, say, two feet from the ground, you will die. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you teleport immediately from the start of the fall. Or backwards. Because he you could, could counter Because uh, he could gravity. teleport. Right. Think about it. Yeah. He could choose and he could choose to open his port upwards. It's like Wong and Strange in the MCU. Yeah. So yeah. he would have essentially, he would go, whoop. Like upsy daisy, like up a couple feet and then bounce and hit the ground. But if he's falling from an airplane and just literally like ports five feet above yeah. the ground, he'll yeah. Once he'll, he hits terminal splash. velocity, yeah. he's going terminal. Yeah. yeah. So he has to break. He can't just go from one to the other. So right. That's a run of like stories of the learning curve era. Yeah. <laughs> finding that out. Yeah. There's a whole generation of mutants that just died before Professor X got to them. Yeah. And that continues well, to happen through people discovering their mutations. Well, let me extend your podcast for another 20 minutes. Let me get on this <laughs> soapbox. That's the other thing about X-Men and mutants that I am absolutely, I wish they would get back to. I don't know if they could ever get this genie in the bottle. It used to be about exploring and growing and learning and experimenting and you would spend time with a character or a series of characters where they were learning their powers. That's New Mutants right now is the closest I agree, to it. I agree. Closest. New, I and agree, I would say I agree. it's not the same. Right. It's the closest. But, it, but that would be it. And then they would get into a normal adventures or, or fight <laughs> bad guys, but they would have to then put those te- put those powers and those skills to the test and then they would evolve and it would take over the course of multiple issues. And so you would get longer arcs you the reader could sit with it longer you could experience it with it now now every mutant i'm not a fan of the krakoa era every mutant is just an overpowered beast who can do everything and anything who has power sets or they're the most worthless mutations and they're essentially like a person who just has horns and they can't do shit yeah, right. See, right. Like, that would be more realistic and, to like the world. Of, yeah, there'll just be people with like odd oddities. Right. In in oddities. in the axe story, Craven the Hunter from Spider Man fame shows up there, and he just starts taking out a bunch of those worthless mutants, like with the lackluster power, offing them like rapid fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of this accelerated during the Morrison era, which I enjoy the Morrison era to a point. I think it really suffered from not having continuity in artists. Rod hates it strictly because that's where they introduced the leather jackets. Oh, interesting. Oh, is that where the, that's well, the they one were trying to suits. they were trying to tie in with the movies. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I'm not a fan of the no. thing with the suits. My yeah, my take is the comics should always be should the comics should not look like the real world. A lot of people who like to their love on that new that Batgirl redesign, the recent cosplay one. Yep. It's great for a cosplayer, but I don't want my comic book to look like a cosplayer. I want that to be an aspirational look. I want right. the cosplayer to try to look like the comic book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in that Morrison era with X-Men, that's when he introduced like that secondary mutation. And then it's just out of hand because then it's everyone can do everything. Because and- Emma originally was just a telepath. Mm-hmm. And then Emma got diamond form in the Morrison era. And, and Angel had blood that could heal people. And Oh, I forgot about yeah. that. And yeah. everyone got the second. And it was just, it's just, it's too much. He became much. a kitty. Yeah, all of it. It's just, it's too much. Pull it back, make it more relatable. I hate the, just, I hate the concept of the whole Krakoa stuff. But that aside, it's as a relatable experience, it's no longer relatable. And that's uh, hopping the franchise a little bit. Have you guys seen Black Adam? No. Yeah, I did. So not a spoiler, just a general. Spoiler, it's bad. That's not a spoiler. But just like a general commentary and stuff. When he calls Dr. Fate a jabroni. Yeah. So that was <laughs> At least he raises the eyebrow in the post credit scene. <laughs> he does. So those were my two things was Black Adam himself, his introduction. It was like, that already breaks the story. He can just like snap his fingers and end this movie. Oh, yeah. So that, he was so overpowered. Like, he's God. Like, they, it, when because I'm not familiar with the character. So when I saw that scene, mm-hmm. I was like, so he has no limits. And then the secondary thing is like Dollar Store Doctor Strange, where his power is Dr. Fate? Fate. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dr. Fate predates Doctor Strange yeah. by at least 20 years. No, I'm just saying this movie. Like, they, <laughs> it is in this movie. God damn it, no, Rod. Dr. Dr. Fate's the original. But I'm saying in this movie, the way they established his power system, yeah, everything, yeah, yeah. it was too plot convenient. Yeah. Because yeah. they were like, my whole thing is I can tell the future very specifically. He tells specific people when they're going to die, but he doesn't see key plot points in the movie. So, anyway. Yeah, there, listen, there's a lot of issues. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of issues with Black Adam. But third the, act was great. The, I the, the fact that had no bearing to the first act, first act, they set up that. Kandok is being overrun by a, by a gang of thugs, then they completely ignore that to fight a demon in the end. That's pretty real world, though. <laughs> <laughs> so Nightcrawler says he's going to surrender. <laughs> and when he says he's going to surrender, Reinhardt attempts to, to shoot him, and it sets the library on fire. Yes. Because this is what happens when you, you... He's firing you, a blunderbuss. You take away crossbows. Yeah, replace them with cobra lasers. Yes, and then it lights yeah. it on. And he's basically saying he needs to purify the entire church. They have a a little bit of a struggle. Tainted by the devil. They're outside, and somebody tries to shoot them from behind, which 
not a really great team that's out there. They're just mm -hmm. like, oh, we'll just shoot through the monk that actually told us where the demon was. Breaks the banister. As that happens, Nightcrawler does what Nightcrawler would ex be expected totally. to do. It's great. He grabs Reinhardt's arm and he's refusing to let him drop. And he's asking him, he's like, why are you saving me? Nightcrawler, again, it's not for me to judge you. It's how's God going to judge you mm -hmm. when this is all over? And it's, again, <laughs> I'm so not used to it. Even today, watching something that is is touching upon religion so yeah. just is transparently it's, the right word. It's transparent. Like, no, it's yeah, surprising. It's, it is surprising. Yeah, and it's also like pretty positive. Yeah, no. yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, because I would say the, a lot of stuff that talks about religion, at least in modern pop culture, is like Rick and Morty, who are basically calling all religions bullshit. Yeah, you know? yeah. and actually, if you guys would have been. You were teens when this was on? This? Uh, yeah. I was like 12, 12, 11, yeah. 12, 13. Yeah. I was in college. But that was the tail end of the big, really real world religious church scandals. Yeah. yeah. Jim and Tammy Faye yep. Yep. and all that TV evangelism stuff. Post that. This is after they'd been exposed as religion was on the fraud. And the church scandals, the Catholic scandals of the molestation stuff had started to come out. like the, Right around this era. I think it was 1988. My Town was on Dateline NBC as one of the first oh, stories. No. And it was the priest from down the street. Yeah. And all this. On, all, yeah. And all the guys on, were watching on Dateline NBC, dudes that we knew. Yeah. talk about this stuff and it was like it was shocking at the time but that's just five or six years before this episode airs so the church and just the concept of religion was having a dip yeah. so with that in mind that they still went so forward thinking and non-ironic with it it is yeah. great and there's still like the afterburn of the satanic panic and stuff around that time too yeah, yeah. that was i mean it wasn't as big as it was a few years before but it was still yeah there. no definitely but nightcrawler's words give reinhardt that moment of clarity and they get out of there and the fire basically destroys the majority of the monastery. The real fire. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, okay. Remember how I was reading the phrase and I was like, what the fuck does that say? It says real fire effect. That's what it was. Because Rod and I love when there are certain things like wipes and just visual effects. Uh -huh. And they literally used real fire, not animated fire oh, that goes over the screen. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Rod. Now That's I, cool. That, now I know it was one good tenth looking. of- It was a good looking burn. Yeah, it looked like they pulled some like stock footage. In the aftermath of the monastery being burnt down, Nightcrawler calls everything a blessing. And Wolverine's like, blessing? What are you talking about? We blew it. Yeah. And, you know, it shows the dichotomy of these two characters. Wolverine sees it as a failure that the monastery was destroyed. Nightcrawler says it's just brick and mortar. Reinhardt has repented. Town is no longer fearful of him. And nobody died. And mm -hmm. he's calling that a win. I lean towards Wolverine. I, I get what you mean. <laughs> but it, as far as from my church perspective, so this was where my issue came with uh, like the pandemic stuff and everything with the church and things. Because not to dive too much into it, but like growing up. Because we've been going on no tangents prior no, to this. No, keep it to, come well, on, keep it on point. I just don't, don't want to like stir like an undue pot or whatever but in just a general sense me and my brother we were and my brother's a pastor now he's so nope. talking about this all the time but we grew up being taught that the church is the <laughs> you talk about this episode of x-men all the time yes <laughs> <laughs> but the, we grew up being taught that the church is the people not the building sure constantly and <laughs> that's some thor asgard shit <laughs> actually yeah but it's like it's where like these people of faith gather right that's the right. church it's not yes. like a brick and mortar building yes. and stuff yet you know recent events have proven that if not most a lot have focused on the building part and so i because i do want to see people who have this much faith in something flourish and stuff mm -hmm. it makes you a better person makes you a better person like my father like he's defected north korea when he was like a kid and stuff he's of faith and that got him through things so i never want to take that away from no. anybody but like faith used properly yeah. is never a problem. So, well, faith is great. Organized religion, yeah, problematic. So that's why Nightcrawler is saying it's just a building. We'll rebuild. Yeah, was, that's I awesome. Was like I like that. That this is the follow through of that principle, <laughs> instead of like a cling to power. Yeah, yeah. No. But also, I was like, well, you had that like Reinhardt situation happening, so maybe it's like good that there was kind of this hard reset for your whole thing. You, yeah, you've been around since. <laughs> Meanwhile, all those monks are ex Nazis. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, they're that's in the German Alps. Yeah. We don't know where that town is. They might be next, like, the, the we don't know what border they're on. Just saying. I, they're Ron, probably I totally agree. I totally agree with you. I lean on the, I prefer the Nightcrawler's take on this position, too. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I, I think that's, that I would say that or believe that myself. Well, it's I, easy. I like seeing Well, let's put it, it this way. Know? It's easy for Nightcrawler to say it. Nightcrawler just been chilling there for a few weeks. That's true. Like, he hasn't been, like, that's not his child at home. Like, yeah. we know this. I he mean, was, he could have been there for years. Maybe. Man, he's not that old, and he was in the circus for quite a while. You know what I'm saying? We don't know how he ages. Well, he was there short enough time so that this is the first time that Cuckoo Guy snapped. You know what I'm saying? Which leads me back to, if he had been there for years, why now? Why is this guy snapping now? 
And it might be because he saw Gambit's eyes, but they cut. But but, <laughs> they, but that was blood. never animated. Plus blood. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say rogue shoulder. <laughs> rogue shoulder drives any man wild. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hundred percent the reason. Any man wild. So they all start to say their goodbyes. Nightcrawler gives Logan a Bible. It has a few passages marked for him. And then we jump over to France. Why did he underline Molson? <laughs> Sorry, I have one little piece of comment, side story that I know that you're just going to kick out of. So my pick, this ties back, I swear. Is it going to be a kick or am I going to throw something at you? <laughs> Probably both. Uh, no, my parents, they've immigrated from Korea. But they, mm-hmm. try to, they like to. Have your parents Korea. listened to this show, by the way? I hope not, but I never know. <laughs> just but checking. I was on a podcast with Ruth Ann and then my dad liked it. Ruth Ann yeah. Thompson? Yep. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so my parents were not on Facebook or social media for the longest time. And we were like, you should go on, if nothing else, you can see the Korean news and not have to like subscribe to like a paper that has to be imported and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're like, now nah, whatever, we bought a computer and stuff. But then my niece was born eight years ago. And then they find out through like their friends and like my godparents and stuff that they can see the baby pictures in real time if they have a Facebook account. Oh, wow. And suddenly they're Facebook experts. Of course mm-hmm. they are. So, of course they are. Anyway, so then they friend me. My dad follows me or whatever and stuff. And I have gone like at least a decade not having my parents on social media at all. Yeah, sure. And so I'm not sure if he scrolled back. Or if he, I didn't stop changing how I post or whatever just because my dad was on there and stuff. Yeah. But then the next time I saw him was either my, I think it was my brother's wedding or his graduation. which was a pretty close time period. And my dad pulls me aside. He's like, Rodney, can I, can I talk to you? I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, oh, so I, I Facebook now. I was like, yeah, I know that. And stuff. I was like, yeah, okay. So I, I see everything you're doing. I'm like, that's good. And then he's like, I just think you should have this. And he gives me like a manila envelope. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. And he's just, you can wait till you go home. And I was like, okay. And then we would go along with the wedding and the whatever. You know, the As you have this myth, m- manila envelope yeah. in your pocket yeah. the whole time. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I opened it like later in the hotel room or whatever. But Those I feet it, picks. It, it, it was literally, I uh, found these on Facebook. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was literally a Bible and a devotional. So oh, I know. It's not, no. It's like, I think you need these. Oh, no. Your dad is Nightcrawler. <laughs> he didn't chew me out, which was historic. He's calmed down. Over yeah, here. yeah, yeah. But he was just like, not judging. I'm just saying. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, that's great. So we're in Paris. Gambit basically says he still doesn't have faith. He thinks that everything is, you're on your own and life is random. Mm. And Rogue is having her own little crisis of faith. She walks away and wonders, yeah, what if we are on our own for this? And then decides to walk into a church. Mm-hmm. Because God blew a newspaper thingy in her face to yeah. have the church on it. Now, walks and in- she absorbed the power of that <laughs> newspaper. That All of a sudden she started talking like J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, no. She was like, Parker, get in here! <laughs> get me those pictures get of Spider-Man. Get me those pictures of Spider-Man, that web-headed menace. After we saw the three cameos we missed in broad daylight, I'm not yeah, sure right? that he might have been right there. Yeah. Yeah. It actually was J. Jonah Jameson's face on <laughs> yeah. the newspaper. She walks into the church that's near her and she sees Wolverine praying. Yeah. And that was actually unironically pretty touching. It was. Like, yeah. that it was a nice ending. Religion or not, Logan coming to terms with just dealing with they they did yes they called it God, but that's as close to being a, a, any denomination. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was pretty non-denominational, and just putting out the idea of a higher power that can give people solace in times of crisis and times of pain. Mm-hmm. And what's more crisis and pain than liter- literally an entire townsfolk full of people okay. coming at you with pitchforks and torches. And like, lasers. And lasers, yeah, and cobra lasers. <laughs> yeah, lasers. In the middle of it, like major bloods. <laughs> I'll run a right to a palm. Like that is to show that the grace of Nightcrawler in that face of the yeah. moment, that the strength he finds through his higher power, which he calls God, but for Wolverine, it might be something else. It might be Justin Trudeau. Like <laughs> it, it might be a McKenzie brother. <laughs> It might be poutine. Sure, it might be poutine. <laughs> uh, really good, yeah, like it. <laughs> anyway, Rogue cries. It's very touching. Yeah, no, it's great. No, but it, <laughs> but it is great. It is great, and I think they did handle it as deftly to be as non-denominational as possible. Yeah. yeah. So that is the episode. The, amazingly, with all of our conversation, there is one other <laughs> tidbit of trivia that hasn't been addressed yet. Okay. The actor who did the voiceover for Nightcrawler. Adrian Yu actually plays Jean Grey's dad in X-Men The Last Stand. Oh, interesting. Really? Yes. That's pretty cool. Is that a purposeful casting, I wonder? I highly doubt that. Huh. That's really cool. Everything else we got. <laughs> yeah. That. That's the only cool thing about that movie. <laughs> the connection to the yeah, animated yeah, series yeah. from that right yeah, there. That yeah. Movie's, yeah, that movie's hot garbage. Many I levels. We can leave it in the dark part of the monthly verse. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can't wait till at some point we're going to have to do filler episodes between when 
this ends after the quarter of Nightcrawler episodes. Welcome to Q1. <laughs> Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler 2023. The entire We're getting blue, baby. The entirety of 2023. Yeah. And before the show starts, we're going to have to fill it with other shit. And I think I'm going to force Rod to watch some of the movies again. Oh, yeah. 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 I, it's not the worst thing, but God, like I just I cannot get over Halle Berry's storm is so. Terrible. Oh, her storm's terrible, uh, especially. Yeah. Other storm. other storm is pretty fucking awful too. Yeah, she, compared to Halle Berry, she was. I was willing to accept Alexandra Ship as storm after the Halle Berry mm-hmm. thing, and this is not a Black Panther spoiler. This is a general mm-hmm. thing. It's a general spoiler. Oh, I, I've heard people comment over the years that at the time for the nineties, oh, it was it was supposed to be Angela Bassett. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. it, it was just a commentary. Is like she was the star power that could have. She done that was role. supposed to play Storm, but they couldn't get an X Men movie together. Okay, so then like now seeing her, I mean, already seeing her as Ramona before, but especially in Wakanda Forever. Yeah, yeah like, with that stark white hair. They're doing yeah. that on purpose. Even if it wasn't the, just her whole presence. She went like, Angel Bassett's a from the, national treasure. From the opening scene of her addressing the UN yeah. and stuff, I was like, this makes me so upset yeah. for the 90s storm, but we got her as Ramona. She's fucking yeah. phenomenal. Angela Bassett so. doesn't age. She's a national treasure, right. and she's a queen. She's yeah. a fucking queen in human form. Yep. She's amazing. But yeah, I truly believe that they put her in that stark white on purpose. Because yeah. you know you could do it muted gray. You could do all kinds of stuff. They're like, yeah, no, this is how cool Storm should look. Yeah. 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 On that note, Joe? Yeah. Final thoughts on this episode. Well, how much time do you got? No, I, Rod, how many yeah, gigabytes well, do we have left well, we, on the card? Well, we haven't filled October yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so last Halloween it's, when we It's this, literally November as we're recording yeah, this, Rod. That's what I mean. I mean. Yeah. We haven't covered October 2023 So before yet. Christmas. <laughs> no, I dig it. I do dig it. I do think that it, it's absolutely a Wolverine story. I think if they... if it, For my money, I wish I would have known just to get into... Like, mm, I wish there was a better reason for it, it just changes the story but reinhardt's like, change reinhardt's change but also the throw this out there that there's an actual crime that happened that the townsfolk think he did so there's more of a driving force that the x-men could then help investigate clear his name kind of a story so instead the, of just the original version of the script did contain aspects about stolen nazi gold and stuff interesting like that. but it was way too told you they were nazis <laughs> i didn't even know that <laughs> It didn't specify that the monks had it. <laughs> okay, okay. But that did have to get cut because it was only going to be given one episode. And yeah. you would have lost all the personal, re- right. like heavy relationship yes. with God. And that is the strength of the show. And so yeah. for that reason, I like it. Plot wise, it's weak. Of, oh, they're after him because he's ugly. And then Reinhardt hates him because he's ugly. And, yeah. But it would have been a stronger story had it, there been some like tribe. Because then that would have given Nightcrawler. Now, Crawler doesn't change at all. He's the same, which is fine. Which is fine. And also, actually, pretty true to his character in the comics. No. He's a straight man. In yeah, he's show. pretty fully no. formed when he joins the X-Men. And they give him moments of doubt throughout the years, but he's always been a solid rock. Appreciate that. And while you might not love the Krakoan era, and I can understand the perspective on that, sure. I do love what it does to Nightcrawler because it, it gives him a total crisis of faith of what happens when you have believed in this religion, right. this faith the entire time, which is predicated on there being an afterlife mm-hmm. when you are living in a society that does not have death. Correct. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That, yeah. That's, I read that the Spurrier way of X, Simon's way Simon of X. Spurrier. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. I read that. That was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And then I would say the only thing that I'm sad we didn't get here and it makes sense why we don't, because mm-hmm. this is the first interaction between Logan and Kurt is they're not comfortable enough with each other that Logan calls him Elf. And that is yep. a thing in the comics that I've just always loved about their relationship is that is his nickname for him. Yep. That's super cute. Did he come back on the show at all, Nightcrawler? There is a thumbnail that shows his face in it and looks like in a mirror or something. And it's been so long since I watched the episodes, I actually don't remember. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, I think uh, Nightcrawler is just... I think he's just integral to the X books, even when he was in Excalibur for 10 years. Yeah. Almost eight years. Basically the entirety of Excalibur. Yeah. 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 There was always just, there was just something missing from the X books. I think, yeah, I don't know. A lot of that is that it's that era of who was on the team when you first found him. And even though I found them 10 years later, the first Hmm. team I read was the burn stuff. The team at that time that was being published for me was the Sylvester stuff. So it was Havoc and those guys. Yep. But I was reading the Burn Claremont stuff. I'm a sucker for that team. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed breaking it down with you fellas. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. One more time, 
Just remind people where they can find you. The Joe on Joe podcast at Joe on Joe pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find me in any podcatcher, reach out, say hello, listen up. It is GI Joe talk, but it's very user-friendly perspective. And I promise you my episodes are not four hours long. <laughs> Twitter TBD <laughs> based on the time we're recording this. Yeah. We'll see how long we're on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. Who knows that, that hellscape, but yeah, but it's fun. So you give it a, Check it out. Thank you all for joining us. If you have any thoughts, make sure to drop them into the comments for either the YouTube upload or the official Instagram post about this episode or one of the 17 different Instagram reels that Rod (laughs) is going to make for this. If you liked what you heard, please, dear God, do. We'll appreciate a rating on the podcast app of your choosing. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or CastBox. I think I need a nap before we record the next episode. Happy 4th of July, everyone. (laughs) That was your best outro you've ever had. (laughs) 